to when I think of uh, what does a business for good mean to me, right? So a term that comes to my mind is a is a phrase called greater purpose, right? So I always believe in you know having a greater purpose to what you do um, is a foundation for um, good for business or business for good, right? So the greater purpose could be, greater purpose doesn't have to be or doesn't necessarily mean that you're making 2x revenues over a period of time. A greater purpose to me really means that it's not about the product that you're making. What's the impact you want to eventually make to your, I mean, again, you're not going to change the world, right? So, but in your own microcosm, are you making an impact to your community, to your uh, to a neighborhood, to who you serve, right? So it doesn't matter what the product category is. In every business that is for good, there's always an opportunity to define a greater purpose for why you're doing it. What's your ultimate purpose for doing it? There's, there's an advantage in that, right? So in, in a company that I work for currently, for example, um, when you ask a survey of all the employees, you know, do you think that um, you make an impact in the organization? The, the response usually is 100% yes. 100% yes. That is, you know, the company that does survey tells us that that is unbelievable that you're able to achieve that that high engagement from your from your from your associates, right? In this case, so. So to me, it's all about, uh, you know, how do you define the greater purpose? How do you define the mission that resonates with the with with the associates? And also, you know, it allows you to build some principles on how you run your business. For example, if quality is your primordial principle, you know, how do you make sure you're not only delivering quality, but you're demonstrating to your associates that the quality is the primary motivation for us, besides the greater purpose that we do, right? So um, in all my career, uh, for example, whether it's Abbott Nutrition, my greater purpose has been working with Model and uh, getting to know the subsistence marketplace or, um, you know, sleep in a heavenly place was a, was a um, voluntary organization that I've been supporting recently. I'm a big brother for a, a little brother that uh, that I work with. So it, as a leader in my organization, it not only provides me that, um, that satisfaction that I'm contributing to the community, that in a, in a business for good as a leader, you can influence your own staff, your own associates in believing that, yes, you know, if there's a role model, you know, can I emulate some of these attributes that make our business a business for good. Yeah, so obviously, um, you know, you know, we all know that, uh, you know, we as a community, we as individuals, um, we we behave certain way when things are going well, and in stress situations, people behave differently. Right, so the the challenge the challenge is oftentimes you know when it's actually challenging an opportunity, right? So I've seen the companies where we have strong mission statement and and a, and a purpose clearly articulated. When things go south, um, those organizations are much more perseverant, much more tolerant in working through and be, and become more stronger or sustainable in their growth than companies that don't have that uh, greater purpose kind of growth, right? Um, but the challenges could be, you know, this is not a company that you would want to invest your, uh, your, your funds in because the growth may not be, you know, once you start thinking about, I mean, the the, the organization that really believe in greater, you know, better for you business are not necessarily looking for next three quarters of income so you can get out or sell the company. Right? They're truly believing in consistent with the greater purpose. You know, what? how can I build the business up to a point that it is sustainable, it is appreciated, and, and it's not just the monetary 
outcomes, monetary metrics that drive them, right? So, so the challenge would be, you know, if I'm, if I want to make uh, big bucks, right? So, yeah, that may not be your right destination uh, uh, to be part of that uh, um, investment, perhaps, right? But, but, but someone like me, I do want to be part of that company that believes in, you know, business for good. You hear the CEO was talking about a sustainability is the cost of doing business. I mean, sustainability doesn't necessarily mean economic sustainability, right? It's about social sustainability. It's about environmental sustainability, the whole thing, right? That's kind of a, one of the greater purpose elements. So I think there is a, um, there, there is a realization, if you will, in the, in the business community that you have to have some mission driven um, you know programs to be able to engage your associate engage your employees and grow further from that um, second thing I mean it's I mean I'm answering your question in a different way right how do you overcome challenges I'm answering from a um, point of view of my insights on the trends um, so this is not necessarily a challenge because when I look at from a human resource standpoint, when we interview young job seekers and ask them, hey, what kind of what kind of company do you want to be part of? Mm -hmm. Right. And more often than not, you hear things like, hey, I want a culture where there is there's a mission, there's a passion for what we do. So so I think during the COVID time, in, you know, across the companies I work for, um, it's become more and more evident that uh, you know, similar to, you know, business for good companies are not necessarily money oriented, right? That, that's that's ultimately what you how you measure. But in a similar vein, the the talent that's looking for jobs, yes, money is important for them, but not at the cost of a bad culture that is present, right? So so one of the ways that uh, the business for good proposition is helping is that, you know, the very concept of you trying to create a greater purpose is actually helping you attract better talent, helping you uh, attract better investors, you know, having a better rapport with your associates. So, I mean, your, your associates are your strength, they're your talent, they're your assets, right? So, so in fact, it's, um, you know, it's helping, of course, the, main challenge is are they making as much money as if you were to build a casino in Las Vegas? Oh well, casino in Las Vegas don't make all this money. Uh, so it's so other than to be honest with you, other than a financial you know uh, growth, which may not be compatible with uh, you know a fast moving consumer product company, um, a, a business for a good kind of opportunities always have uh, you know. They do present challenges from a financial standpoint, but there are a lot of ways to circumvent that, build a stronger team, and move forward. So, um, yes, there are challenges, but um, in today's um, in today's world, in today's um, talent force out there, uh, there's more appreciation for a company that has a, a goodness associated with their business propositions. So I don't see it as a totally negative um, but it's uh, it's also a point of view of uh, you know if you are too much about you know good for you kind of business and uh, not pay attention to your bottom line which happens sometimes a lot of companies have died because of that right so I think being smart about uh, how you invest and, and and the challenge could be you know oftentimes uh, you know, culturally, how do I communicate, especially in the business for good kind of concepts, how do I communicate to my associates that uh, a particular project, a particular program is not going to is not going to continue because it doesn't make business sense, right? So I think that's been a challenge. And how, how do you communicate? Because you are you're built upon a culture of everybody is super nice and we are uh, we're doing our best, right? To a to a culture of uh, 
yes, we are good for a uh, good for you company, but at the same time, we're not a company that's going to compromise the financial security of our associates, right? So that's important. That's a that's that's a critical dialogue that needs to be inserted in this uh, communication, right? Once you have that, once once you make that make that clearly known, then your business decisions can be really more. Uh, smarter, a little bit more, um, you know, financially driven, perhaps, right? So I think, I think I see in some of those companies a lack of communication on why we're doing it beyond just talking about mission all the time. 